Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a glorious day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, the man on the screen is James David Manning. He is a pastor. He pastors a church in Harlem, New York called ATLA, which is an acronym that stands for All the Land Anointed Holy. He was born in 1947 in Red Springs, North Carolina. As a young man, he moved to New York City, where by his own admission, he took the low road. He got involved in criminal behavior, including burglary, robbery, larceny, possession of weapons, just, just what young men get involved in. So he ended up spending three and a half years in prison. It was in prison that he found the Holy Ghost and was saved. And coming out of prison, he began pastoring this church, Atla, which was at the time called Bethelite Missionary Baptist Church. But he changed the church's name in 1991. This man is a very controversial preacher. He is not a black man who, he doesn't sugarcoat things. He's like an old-timey preacher who calls it like he sees it. And in this particular sermon, he is talking about the black world, Africa, African Americans, everybody. And in this sermon, he challenges black women. He said, black women don't have any sense. And my question is, is he right? I'm going to let you listen to the audio, and then I'll come back and discuss some of my takeaways from the sermon. Black people have had Africa, that big old continent over there. They never built one boat that was seaworthy. Not one. There's not one monument in Africa, in all of Africa. I know you're talking about Egypt. I'm, Egypt is not Africa. There are no great cities that were built. Even before the first colonization of white people coming to the shores of Africa or the slave ships, black men built nothing. No sewer system. No houses above one level. And none of them made out of stone, all of them made out of grass and wood. Black men, before the white man ever got to Africa, the worst thing that could ever happen to South Africa was when they gave it to Nelson Mandela and black folk. That was a great nation. Now, notwithstanding apartheid was wrong, we all know it's wrong, I'm against it. There should have been some other resolution, though, than turning it over to Nelson Mandela. Disease, AIDS, and crime is running wild in Johannesburg. They're killing one another over there. They're dying of sickness. The government is mismanaged. The people who ran the nation are now leaving the nation because black folk don't know how to run no nation. They don't know how, and we need to admit it. I know you don't like it, but you need to stop shucking and jiving. We got a problem. Nigeria produces oil every year, yet the children over there are hungry and pot-bellied and walking barefoot. We got a problem. You talk about the Hutus and the Tutsis. Look what's going on in Zimbabwe now with Mugabe. We got a problem, black folk. And forget about Zimbabwe and South Africa, Nigeria. Look at what y'all have done in Harlem. You can't even hold on to Harlem. We got a problem. Black folk don't understand the world. You can get mad with me all you want. You can say what you want, but you can't prove me wrong. Now, I'm not saying this because I hate black folk. I'm saying it because I love you enough to tell the truth. And the only person going to ever help us get out of the situation is going to be God. There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. He does not understand the world. He doesn't. I don't care if he learned medicine. He doesn't understand the world. He can't even hold on to Harlem. When he was here, he moved out. We got to talk to the Lord. People, we got to talk to God. And black women, Shirley Chisholm, Harriet Tubman, Coretta King, one of her boys, yeah, okay, then we got a black president. But you black women, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all ain't got no sense, you black women. Your men treat you like the dogs, like your dogs. They walk all over you. They make you pay the bills at home. And then the preachers pimp you in the churches and make you pay the bills. Y'all crazy black women buying these black men private jets the tune of $50 million for a nigga crazy. Black people, let me tell y'all something. If y'all don't ever hear me say preach again, they can kill me tomorrow. But let me tell you something. We're not going to ever get anywhere until we look into the mind of a black man. He doesn't think correctly. I don't care what he is. He can be a doctor. He can be an astrophysicist. The nigga ain't got no sense. You talk to him. You talk to a black man. He doesn't
doesn't understand the world. He's never built anything. The most the black people have ever done, they did it here in America under white people's help. Now that is a lot to unpack because he ran the gamut of black people. Africa, African Americans, black people all over the world. He said black people do not understand the world. We don't understand how the world works. Now I agree with him on that. He came with a different perspective with black women because we hear black men on social media all the time talking about all the things that's wrong with black women. His critique really was not of black women in the sense that there's anything wrong with you as far as being feminine and masculine. See, he did not come from that point of view. He said you don't have any sense because you let, me, you, you let your men treat you like dogs. And he said, you, the preachers are pimping you out at church, buying jets. And that was directly referencing Creflo Dollar in this whole thing about trying to buy him a new jet because his jet had some mechanical problems coming from New York with his family. And so now he's, you know, shaking the church down for money to buy a jet. So that's what he was talking about. Now, this sermon was done, I think, in 2014. So it's pretty old. But it's just now making the rounds of social media and getting people's attention. I don't know why, but I'm glad that somebody said this. A black man said this. Black women don't have any sense. He didn't say anything about black women being masculine. He didn't say anything about black women going to college, getting degrees, getting promotions on jobs. He's saying that men are using black women. Now that's what he said. Treating you like dogs, making you pay bills. Treating you like dogs, making you pay bills. He said black women, you don't have any sense. Now, my takeaway from this man is he's saying that black women are better than this. And then let some other race of women come on the scene and they will make it clear to you that that woman is more important than you are. This is what black women have allowed themselves to be reduced to. A lot of black women didn't have fathers like my father and like this man who will tell you, you treat a man in direct relation to how he treats you. And if a man doesn't have any respect for himself, he's not going to have any respect for you. And there's no point in wasting any time with him. And it doesn't take much to determine whether or not a man has respect for himself or whether he has respect for you. And it goes back to what Maya Angela says. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time. You cannot fix a man and you cannot change him. Either a man likes and respects you or he doesn't. And if he doesn't, it is pointless to waste time with him and it's going to end up doing damage to the woman. This is a sermon that I think black women should listen to. I think this is a sermon that black women could benefit from. Just focus on the part that says black women don't have any sense. Your men treat you like dogs. And the preachers pimp you out at church. Making you pay bills. And buying jets and cars and houses really. Because black women will tithe. And black women have also been brainwashed into thinking that even if I've been fired from my job, I need to take what I have and give it to the church. I know, I'm not really sure that that's biblical. But somebody will show you where it is. But common sense has to come in somewhere. And I'm saying that black women have this attitude. I don't think black men have that attitude. So this is something that I believe black women could benefit from. To do some serious introspection. Am I allowing myself to be treated like a dog? Am I paying bills? And then being disrespected? Running all over you with other women. He didn't say other women, but he says alluded to that. This is a black man talking. This is a black man who sounds like he is fed up with the behavior of black people. There is a kind of craziness going on with black women that I have noticed. I don't know all of the reasons that can account for the low self-esteem that is in black American women. But I believe that some of this started 
with this so-called integration when this loving versus Virginia and then integration and black men finally started having access to white women. I believe that many of them see white women as a destination. That's where they are really trying to go. They will use black women for a season until they get to the white woman, the woman that they really want. This has caused a lot of self-esteem issues in black women, especially dark-skinned black women. Because black women used to be, well, I don't care if other races of men don't like me because I like black men. And black women were counting on black men to like them back. But what happened was there's a group of black men, and I don't know how large the number is. It might be the majority. It may not be. But they decided they were going to weaponize their access to white women and other races of women against black women. Now this man said black men have never built anything and they don't think right and they don't know how the world works. So if this man is right, that means that black men don't think like other races of men. In the United States, in any large city, you will see a Chinatown, you will see a place where people, a Spanish town with people from Latin America, South America, everything is in Spanish. The men of those communities have built those communities up so their people can be comfortable. So their children and the women in their communities can be comfortable. But if black men are only interested in access to other groups of women and don't want to build for their own communities, then that means that black men really don't think like other races of men. And they don't know how the world works because when the Chinese build Chinatown, they're not building that for black people. They're not even building it for white people. You can go there, but they're building it for the people like them where they can enjoy their culture. So black women are dealing with a different kind of man than other races of women. Many black women feel that black men put other races of women on a pedestal above them. So black women feel like they have to take off black men what other women may not take because they don't look like the other women. They have dark skin or different texture hair or different kind of features. So in order to attract that man, she's got to put up with being treated like a dog. That's something to think about. Black women compromise themselves and overcompensate by putting up with a lot of behavior because they're trying to hold on to the idea of the black family. Or I want my children to be black. I want a black husband. And they are allowing themselves to be misused and mistreated because the men don't see it the same way. And if they don't want to build anything, they want, they're comfortable with what other races of men build, then that really does put the black woman at a disadvantage. So what it comes down to is that black women have to learn to let go. Because if all you're doing is being treated like a dog, made to pay bills, and men walking all over you, totally disrespecting you, you really don't have anything anyway. And there needs to be more black men speaking on this issue. Because this man did not indict black women from, from the standpoint of there's, that, so that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. He's indicting black women from the standpoint that you're allowing yourself to be used by men who are not even going to build anything for you or for himself. And that's a sad commentary on black people. But this is his outlook, and there are a lot of people who think like this man. Now, some people say it's hate speech, especially all the other stuff that he said about Africa. Some of that, to me, is not correct. And so I'm just going to stick with what he said about black Americans. Let me know what you think about this. Y'all let me know what you think about this man's sermon. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.